everybody. Ten seconds, Mr. President. Five, four. Good evening. A few minutes ago, the United States ambassadors to every country in the world told the leaders of those nations what I am about to tell you. It's a bit complicated, so it will take some time, so I hope you will bear with me, hear what I have to say. A little over a year ago, two American astronomers, Marcus Wolf and Leo Biedemann, working on a mountaintop in Arizona, Shh, saw something nobody say in the night sky that caused them great concern. Comet. But the comet was, well, there was a remote possibility that the comet was on a path that could bring it into direct contact with the Earth. <laughs> now, we get hit all the time by rocks and meteors, some of them the size of cars, some no bigger than your hand. But the comet we discovered is the size of New York City, from the north side of Central Park to the Battery, about seven miles long. Put another way, this comet is larger than Mount Everest. It weighs 500 billion tons. Now, chances are, this thing is this astrophysicist. Geologist and climatologist. Where the hell is science? Okay, I want it everywhere. With the hail pop stand ups. And graphics, I need graphics. The comets began far out in space. There was left over from the creation of the solar system after the planets were formed billions of years ago. Now these chunks of space and debris are in an elongated orbit around our sun. But every now and then, one of them gets bumped on a lack of billiard ball on a pool table and is knocked into a different orbit. Now, if this comet continues on its path around the sun and keeps its present course, sometime on August 16th, roughly a year from now, there's a chance that we might have impact. So for the past eight months, the United States and Russia have been building the largest spaceship ever constructed. It's being built in orbit around the Earth, and we call it the Messiah. And right now, a team of American astronauts and one Russian are at Cape Canaveral in Florida. In two months, they will leave on the shuttle Atlantis to board the Messiah. This is the crew that will stop the comet. We are Okay, all flight controllers, we're at T-minus 30 seconds and counting. Let's take a close look. APUs look good. Logs and LH2 are pressurized. 10, 9, Flight, we're go eight, for auto sequence. Roger, Jerry. Good Six, luck and Godspeed five, in this. Thanks, Mitch. Four, three, two, one. Propelled by 500,000 pounds of liquid fuel, the shuttle crew heads toward their initial destination. When the crew enters the Messiah, they will find a payload of eight nuclear devices that will eventually be used to blow up the comet. The Messiah itself will be powered by an experimental nuclear propulsion system that was originally created for a very different purpose. That program was called Orion. Now, with the help of Russian engineers, a technology designed to propel weapons of mass destruction will power the ship that will intercept the greatest threat our planet has ever faced. MSNBC News with Jenny Lerner. Good evening. 
Sometime in the next hour, the Messiah mission will enter its most critical phase, the interception of Wolf Biederman and the setting of the nuclear devices that will deflect it off its collision course with Earth. But first, Captain Spurgeon Tanner will have to guide the spacecraft through the blizzard of rocks, sand, and ice that make up the comet's tail, or coma. The crew will have to complete its work before the sun rises. This is my ship. We start our approach. Depressurizing bay. Opening payload doors. Don't let that little bit of gravity down there go to your heads. <laughs> okay. If all is going according to schedule, the astronauts should now be placing the moles on the comet's surface. The moles are, well, they're what they sound like. They are drilling machines that burrow to a depth of 100 meters, where they wait to be detonated. Each one carries a 5,000 kiloton warhead. 